when I started this channel two years ago, I was interested in reviewing and discussing smaller fixed blade knives. Over the last two years, I have watched dozens, possibly hundreds of videos on fixed blade knives, small fixed blade knives, short fixed blade knives, what some may refer to as EDC or everyday carry fixed blade knives, as well as neck knives. Even though there can be very similar specifications, overall length, blade length, blade shape, even what some people would refer to as short can vary intensely. As I was watching these videos, I was intrigued by the variety of styles of carry and the interpretations of terms like short or small or EDC, everyday carry. Every knife person seems to have a different understanding of those terms or an interpretation of those terms that is unique to them. That's to be expected, but it's also the reason that I was interested in putting out my own small fixed blade or EDC fixed blade overview. I don't want to waste too much time on my own personal preference, but by explaining those, I hope it gives you some greater insight. First up would be the Berg Blades Bottle Butcher. This is probably the smallest fixed blade knife that I own. It comes in at just three inches in overall length. I've added this lanyard and lanyard bead by Black Cross Leather for a little bit of added purchase. This is a tiny fixed blade. It comes with a Kydex sheath. This is 440C stainless steel and brown micarta handles. And it has a black coating for some added corrosion resistance and protection against wear. This handle does feature cutouts, but they are certainly not for my fingers. I can get barely two fingers on the handle of this blade, and even then it's, it's really more like one and a half. And it's otherwise a nifty little bottle opener. Nice solid thunk on that Kydex sheath. No rattle whatsoever. What you see is what you get. It's a solid chunk of steel made with quality materials in a small but effective package. This is a quality little fixed blade. It comes in at $40 direct from Berg Blades. You pay, I think, $5 for shipping. You use the bottle opener with the Kydex sheath on it, obviously. You don't want to get cut while you're opening your beverage, your root beer. Definitely one of the smallest fixed blades that I own, but also one of my most frequently used. The next blade I want to show you is the Maniago Knife Makers Micro 2. This is another very small fixed blade designed by Jesper Voxnes of Vox Knives. This one is featuring green micarta scales and bowler M390 steel. The Micro 2 has an overall length of just 4.3 inches and a blade length of just under 2 inches. A little bit of belly there. Almost looks like a reverse Tonto blade, but the belly makes it sheep's foot, I guess. It has this huge finger choil, which makes it so that even sausage-sized fingers like mine can fit right in there. And look, it's perfectly balanced, just resting there on my index finger. Really nice jimping up top on the front and on the back. Lanyard hole there at the end. Small, but gorgeous. And it fits ever so perfectly. If I only had my forefinger and my thumb with which to grip this knife, I would still be able to hold it really well. It locks in just beautifully right on those two fingers. And of course my middle and third finger, some of my third finger anyway, find it onto the back of the handle there. And, uh, and I find that my thumb rests right on top of that jimping right where it wants to. While it's a diminutive handle, it does offer some excellent grip and extra robustness so that it's retained in the hand. And actually this jimping on the back makes it so that my fingers that wrap around the handle get a little bit of extra bite there. 
very small, very pocketable, very gentlemanly looking. The leather sheath is a little bit gimmicky. There are two magnets, one in the back of the sheath here and one in the sheath strap. You can stow the strap behind the sheath like so, or you can leave the strap around the knife for retention. The reason I say this is gimmicky is because any other magnetic thing that you have in your pocket is gonna stick to this. It is nice for when you wanna remove the knife from the sheath, but you don't wanna set the knife on the dirty ground or whatever. You can just kind of leave it there on the sheath and the sheath will actually hold the knife using the magnet. That's fine, kind of cool actually. And the fact that when you go to stow this knife, it's sort of sucked in by the magnet. The sheath does retain the blade, no doubt about that, and the added magnet in the strap, the way that loops around and connects to the actual steel on the blade, that is sort of neat. Me personally, I kind of think that it gets in the way of a clean deployment, but that's only because I'd be a little bit worried to cut up this nice leather sheath. But otherwise, it functions as advertised, doesn't look bad at all, and is small. I mean, this this whole thing just fits in the palm of my hand. So you could fit it in your pocket, perhaps carry it around your neck, fix it another way. The magnets, I don't think, necessarily make or break this, this knife package for me. If it had the leather sheath without the magnets, that would be fine, but with the magnets is cool too. Oh, there we go, stuck on another knife. I decided to spend the money on the Kydex sheath kit that is also made by Maniago Knife Makers. Costs almost $50. And in it, obviously, comes the Kydex sheath. You get some leather cordage for neck carry. You get these leather bands for belt loops. And of course it comes with this Ulti Clip, Slim 2.2, I believe. So that's cool, I guess. I'm not the biggest fan of Ulti Clip. It just doesn't appeal to me. I don't like that this hook piece is designed to basically catch the fabric on your pants. You lift this spring steel and then that clamps down over your jeans or whatever, your pocket even. I had a hard time finding good footage of people using it and deploying it on fixed blade knives, but I'm sure people do. And I know that a lot of people like carrying knives that have these. I'm not saying the ulti clip is another gimmick, but I think part of the reason this package costs 44 or 48 bucks, depending on who you buy it from, is because of the ulti clip. The Kydex is not expensive. I would have much rather paid 20 bucks for the just the Kydex sheath, and then if I wanted to buy an ulti clip, I could have gone and bought an ulti clip on my own, and I certainly don't need any cheap leather cordage or loops. Uh, no offense to Maniago Knife Makers, I'm sure this is fine leather for what it is, but the Kydex is what I wanted. That's what I'm going to carry it in, and maybe I'll buy another one, but for now, since I have these two different versions, I'll probably just switch off using the Kydex in whichever one that I'm going to carry. It does have a very satisfying thunk, nice retention, absolutely no rattle, the thumb ramp does come back a little bit far. I mean, honestly, I would have wanted something about maybe right here, you know, like kind of a little bit farther up on the handle. For whatever reason, they decided to put it right there. And honestly, it does pop right off. So no harm, no foul. My preference does not make it somebody else's problem. And it kind of looks cool the way this flares up. It's, it's not a bad design. The rivet job in this is nice. There's a little weep hole for drainage on either side and in the very tip, which is not the biggest deal, but it is a nice consideration. This is just a lightweight 
nice quality piece of Kydex. No complaints um, other than the overall price tag. This is a small enough knife. Again, it's just over four inches in total overall length. This one might be closer to like four and a half inches in the Kydex. This is a knife that'll go in your hand or in your pocket, in your coin pocket even. And I don't imagine I'm gonna miss that leather sheath if I've got this Kydex. It's snappy, it's lightweight, and it's low profile. If you did decide to wear this on your neck, it's very thin, very diminutive, short overall length, sheep's foot style blade. You know, the magnet thing, a little goofy, but otherwise a decent knife at a little bit of an expensive price. I think these Micro 2s go for around 85 bucks, depending on the variant. They have some with carbon fiber handles uh, that obviously get a little more expensive, maybe 90 or 100 bucks. Look around on the internet, you can find these on sale. I think I paid 75 bucks and then about $44 for the Kydex sheath kit. All in all, a decent short fixed blade knife. Looks gentlemanly, non-threatening, definitely plenty useful and small enough to fit into a pocket and do its thing. This knife is called the Topps Ferret. It is 4.88 inches in overall length, features 1095 carbon steel, weighs 3.3 ounces with the sheath. The Topps Ferret features black micarta handles, white liners for a little bit of contrast and pop, 1095 carbon steel with some rugged jimping up top. Some people would describe this as uncomfortable to use, but it definitely is effective as far as maintaining grip. The blade is coated in Topps proprietary black traction coating. As far as I'm concerned, this is what I was looking for back when I started this channel. I had seen other Topps knives. I even did a review for the Topps ALRT XL, which is a rugged, hard use fixed blade. But this knife, being just under five inches in overall length, full tank construction, 1095 high carbon steel, Nice Kydex sheath, solid lockup, no rattle whatsoever. Just a really well executed small fixed blade. Small, but capable. Not necessarily powerful, but dependable. My index finger lines up with that first cutout pretty well, and where my middle finger wants to wrap around is basically right after that mound in there. So I find that my first and middle fingers are separated by that little bit of bump in the grip. And then of course I've got enough room to get my third finger around the very back of the handle. And my pinky, while it doesn't have much to grab onto, it does sort of lock in that back part of the handle there. And I kind of pull in and press and I find that it's snugging that handle into the rest of the meat of my hand. And my thumb pretty much lands right on that really solid jimping. The materials are nice. Drop point style blade, plenty of belly, a nice little sharpener's choil there, the Kydex sheath, grips where these contours come in. Nice solid thunk. Easily deployed, and it's just a small little three finger fixed blade knife. It does come with this little bit of cord for neck carry. I've added this mushroom bead by Black Cross Leather of Colorado. I find I don't have a ton to say, mostly because I'm, I'm so satisfied with it. This next knife is called the Nemesis Knives Afterburner. This knife comes in at 5.25 inches overall with a 2.25 inch blade made of 9CR13 COMOV steel. It's 4.6 millimeters thick. This has a very unique handle design. Nice big choil. Super duper jimping on the blade and handle sides of the tang, even the underside of the handle there. Nemesis Knives is based in Mesa, Arizona and features some truly interesting designs. I liked this one because of the blade shape, 
drop point, high hollow grind, and also because of this retention hole here, which is actually how the blade is retained in the Kydex sheath. It's snappy in and out of the sheath. Absolutely no rattle. And I did have to put a little bit of a lanyard on the end with a Monsuta bead by Damned Designs. This one got crushed somehow, so I filled him with super glue. This knife only cost about $32. Love how lightweight it is. Another really thin, low-profile carry. And it only weighs 1.7 ounces. The only thing I've noticed on this, you can kind of see this little dimple there in that ring. I'm talking about right there, where you can kind of see the finishes uneven around that circle. That's getting pretty nitpicky for a cheap production knife. So I'm not going to let it bother me, and I'm good, just going to appreciate this knife for what it is, which is a really cool badass little edc fixed blade from nemesis knives this is the afterburner you probably recognize the securex sheath and that crayx rubberized polymer handle this is the cold steel pendleton mini hunter offered in aus 10a steel this knife is 6.625 inches in overall length I believe the actual blade length on this is 2.875 inches. But I've enjoyed a number of different cold steel models for their capabilities and for their budget friendliness. This cold steel Pendleton Mini Hunter features this Crayx rubberized polymer handle. It is a firm handle, but it has a soft rubberized grip texture. It is contoured and is a full tang construction fixed blade. The only thing so far that I didn't like about this knife was the sheath. I cut away at some of that webbing. Originally that webbing extended up the handle, featured a loop with a snap. That was just too much rattling, too much extra fabric, kind of loosey-goosey sort of stuff that I don't like. I just cut down the webbing and decided I'd just use the Securex sheath, which does a fine job of retaining the blade. No rattle, no movement, smooth, clean, easy deployment, and it locks in basically right there on that bottom part of the handle that sticks out as a finger guard. This is a fantastic, snappy, sharp little knife. Nice thick blade stock that tapers down to a razor thin edge. Beautiful high grind. Stone wash, but a little bit polished. Nice sharpener's choil. Sweet little drop point blade. Honestly, the blade reminds me a lot of the Bob Dozer Folding Hunter by K Bar. I liked it because it features a lanyard hole has a super grippy handle with plenty of room for me to get my entire hand on there. And it's otherwise pretty lightweight. Definitely pocketable. It may leave some sticking out. A little bit on the longer side compared to some of the other knives that I've reviewed and been interested in. But I just love that shape. Love the overall package. AUS 10 A steel. It's going to be easy to sharpen, plenty stainless, and will survive some wear and tear. Cold Steel makes some weird stuff, but I like that they partner with different individuals to come up with different designs. I'm not saying anybody at Cold Steel wouldn't have come up with this on their own, but I really like the size, the blade length, the blade shape. Everything about it is just really handy, really nice. It's slicey if you want it to be slicey, but substantial enough to still be a capable cutting tool. It's an older K-Bar fixed blade. It is made in the USA, it does feature this leather sheath, which is showing its age. Full tang fixed blade, drop point with a hollow grind, contoured handle, really fine ergonomics. You can see the contours in the handle, which is substantial and thick. There's plenty of real estate on that handle for all of my fingers to get a good grip. 
Love that hollow grind. Love the way this knife feels in the hand. Super fat, tacky rubber handle. Really lets you bear down on it. Get a good solid grip. Excellent lock up in the hand. And that choil makes it so that my hand is not going anywhere. Super cool. Older fixed blade knife that I don't mind taking camping. Because of the way it looks, it just looks a little bit more old timey. I don't mind carrying it on the belt. The sheath is snappy. Knife deploys great. Excellent companion knife. EDC blade. It's been great. These are the Spyderco Enough in H1 steel sheep's foot blade serrated and in VG10 satin plain edge. The Spyderco Enough features full tang construction, omnidirectional fiberglass reinforced nylon handle scales, titanium oxide hardware, and that famous Spyderco H1 stainless steel. H1 is corrosion resistant, it is salt waterproof. This is pretty much some of the finest blade steel in my opinion because it does work harden, which means as you sharpen it, the hardness increases, especially on these serrations here, which end up being the hardest part of the blade. The Spyderco Enough come in at 6.75 inches in overall length. The H1 steel version weighs 4.0 ounces. The VG10 version comes in at 3.08 ounces. Really nice lock up in the hand. I've got my full hand on this handle. The jimping right on that top part of the spine where my thumb wants to land. The omnidirectional texturing on these fiberglass reinforced nylon handles makes it so that your fingers will not slip if it gets wet. Now this is just a snazzy knife, a really high quality, sturdy cutting tool. Even though it's not completely rust resistant like the H1 steel, the VG10 is still decently stainless. Love the handle, love the stainless hardware and the TiO2 hardware, the titanium oxide hardware on the salt version so that it doesn't rust at all. And it does of course fit into that sub three inch blade category. These are just really practical, well implemented, well designed cutting tools. I definitely carry the salt version more than I carry the VG10 version. This makes an excellent camping companion, steak knife, in the best of situations but if you're on a boat in the water on the beach anywhere salty anywhere humid anywhere where you're going to be sweating a lot or working hard i just don't know if this knife can be beat this knife cannot rust this thing is going to last and outperform just about everything else i own anyway the spider co enough sheaths come with the Spyderco belt clip. This one is set up for vertical carry. I haven't always been the hugest fan of these big bulky clips, but they do work. They are easily removed. You can move them around to any number of configurations on this injection molded sheath. No rattle. What you're hearing is just the rivets in the plastic. It's extremely well retained, and there is a bit of a thumb ramp kind of area to this where you can press in. It's just a great stout, solid fixed blade. Last but certainly not least, the Viper Barris One. This is another Italian made knife designed by Tommaso Rumici, featuring Bowler M390 steel, green canvas micarta handles, the knife has an excellent fit in the hand. In another video review of this exact knife, a gentleman described having a similar reservation about seeing a knife with finger cutouts in the handle. But once it's in your hand, resting on your index and middle fingers, it is perfectly balanced. Most of the weight of this knife is actually resting right here that first knuckle on my middle finger. Right in there is kind of where it wants to hang out and sit. So I feel it well balanced where I naturally go to grip the knife. There's enough handle for my third and fourth fingers to wrap around and then my thumb finds that nice sturdy jimping and that's exactly where the pad of my thumb 
wants to rest right there on top. This little bit of a choil here makes it so that your finger's not going to slip out onto the blade. Sharpener's choil. The steel is rounded to match some of the contouring of that green canvas micarta handle scale. It does stick out just a little bit past so that when your fingers make contact on the steel and the micarta, you still have a well-rounded, smooth, soft feel to it. This knife comes in at just over six inches in overall length, right in the sweet spot for me. The blade measures 2.64 inches. Loved that belly, a lot of curve, and it's just a high flat grind all the way up essentially to the very top of the spine there. The steel is four millimeters thick, and we will compare this to the Giant Mouse GMF1F PVD coated in five millimeter thick Bowler M390 steel designed by Jesper Voxnes and Jens Anso. This has got to be hands down one of the best EDC blades. Giant Mouse is California based, but their knives are made in Maniago, Italy. Here is the Giant Mouse GMF1 in N690 steel, stone washed. So the Giant Mouse GMF1 and GMF1F are almost an inch shorter than the Viper Bears. The GMF1 features a large choil here for the index finger, and then middle and third finger kind of wrap around, and the pinky does this locking in kind of thing right there on the back, and obviously I've added a lanyard for some additional real estate. It doesn't need to be any larger, but I know there are some folks out there with larger hands that might appreciate that almost extra inch that the Viper Barris 1 offers. The Barris has a bit more heft to it, but I think the GMF1 was designed with utility and lightweight carry in mind. This obviously comes with a gorgeous leather sheath, but there are folks that make a Kydex sheath. This is one that somebody made for the GMF1F using that first ring to sort of lock it in there. No rattle, lightweight, excellent construction. It's everything that I wanted and needed for my GMF1F. But if you felt like you were missing any room, then this Viper Barris 1 might be one to check out. Viper Barris does come with an injection molded plastic sheath. We've got a nice solid lockup. It does rattle. When they made this sheath, it was to accommodate both the Viper Barris 1 and the Viper Barris 2. So the Viper Barris, here it is in the drop point blade in the sheath. The Viper Barris 2, there it is in the sheep's foot. It may have saved them a little bit of time or effort making basically universal sheaths for these knives, but I would have loved to see one that fit the actual knife itself. And of course the rattle can be distracting. I was just going to make a comment about how I would carry this, and honestly I'd put it in my pocket just like the rest of these. This one actually came with an ulti clip. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with ulti clip. I'm not making any claims about its usability or utility. I might use it on another one of my smaller knives. Really, the ulti clip just wasn't a selling point for me. Otherwise, it's just a quality production fixed blade. The Viper Barris one. I didn't originally have this knife on the table, but it is worth mentioning the QSP Neckmuck. The neck muck is six and a half inches in overall length and features a blade length of just over two and three quarter inches. Got a nice sharpener's choil there on the blade. Milled G10 handles with the finger grooves. Everything has been smoothed out. Lanyard hole, full tank construction. And that's a sweet spot for the pinky to hang out back there and really lock that grip in. This is by German designer Arthur Brem. He came up with the prototype, which he originally called the Groovy Neckmuck. It reminds me a little bit of the Leduc. It kind of has that shape. It actually reminds me even more of the Jesper Voxnes Boker Plus Nesme Pro. The blade shapes are very similar. The Nesme Pro has a little bit more meat on the blade. Otherwise, some of the exact same features are present on this 
QSP, which is available at a fraction of the price. The knife is in D2 steel, nice sturdy jimping right on top. And this is a slicey blade, it really thins out. Features a high flat grind and a razor sharp edge. My hands are medium to large size and this locks up perfectly. These finger grooves don't allow for a ton of interpretation. It's well balanced, nestles perfectly in my hand. And the jimping on the spine of the blade is right where I want it. Each of these features a Kydex sheath, which locks up nicely. Absolutely no rattle. It's also available in black G10 and OD green or olive drab green. There are other videos of this knife on YouTube, which I would suggest watching, such as the one by Arthur Brem himself. The video is in German, but you can change the closed captioning to auto-translate into English and at least get a decent idea of his walkthrough, which is pretty cool. Great knife at a great price. A lot of folks have nothing but good things to say about QSP, which is a Chinese company. Arthur Brem designed the knife. QSP produced it. And what you get is a well-thought-out knife at a decent price. Thank you for watching, and as always, enjoy your knives.